Welcome to the Unscripted Podcast. My name is Corby LaCroix, and the song you're hearing right now is called Great and Mighty One, available on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your music. But for now, recording from the Unscripted Studio, here's your host and my friend, Aaron Conrad. Great Redeemer, God of All right, everybody, welcome back to Unscripted from my Jerseys of Hope Studios. I'm really excited about this today. Had a chance to uh, pre-screen a movie. And so, Brock, do you want to introduce yourself and we will go from there? Yeah, I'm Brock Keasley. I'm the writer and director of The Shift, which is a sci-fi thriller coming at you from Angel Studios on December 1st. That's right. So I have to start here because your bio has a very interesting thing in it. And it is that your daughters did a, you have three daughters, is that right? Yes, three daughters. Three daughters. And they did a PowerPoint so that you would get another dog. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. It, they, uh, I had no idea it was coming. They sat me down one night. They didn't even tell me what they were doing. They just popped this thing up on the TV, and they started going through this presentation about this dog named Baxter. And, and it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. It, it was so clever. And by the time they got to the end of it, I just was like... We're getting another dog. Like there was no way you could say no. And so it was, he was our third dog at the time. And I'm actually a cat person. So how I ended up with three dogs, it's, it's one of life's cruel tricks, but, but he's a great dog, thankfully. But uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a night. I can't imagine where they got their creativity from. I, I have no idea. Just, just <laughs> in the blood somehow. I don't know. That's right. All right. You were the director producer of a film that I had the opportunity over the weekend and the holiday weekend to watch with my two, my two daughters and my wife. Oh, cool. And so let's just talk about the film. Cause we didn't get on to talk about PowerPoints and dogs, but I just couldn't <laughs> let that one pass. It was amazing when I was reading your bio. So uh, let's talk about the film because I really enjoyed it. I have a lot of thoughts. I have notes in front of me from that. I was taking during the let's film. Dig in. So let's do it. Where did this project begin? So this began, it depends on how far back you want to go. If you want to go way, way back, it was a short story I wrote and published on MySpace, believe it or not, in 2006. Wow. And it was, it was, that was about the time I, I started experimenting with writing and hadn't ever really written anything that wasn't like a school assignment. But I was yeah. 28 years old and, and blogging had become a thing. And I just, on a whim, I was like, yeah, I'm going to write a short story and see what happens. And it was about this guy who, enters this this diner with the guy who introduces himself basically as the devil and the devil is there to offer him a job and i was just really curious of you know what what spin could i do on that and what would happen if that guy came into that conversation as a person of faith and how would he handle it and so you know it was it was something i i wrote and published and got good response and i moved on and then a number of years later, circumstances in my life changed dramatically. I, I, my career of 15 years as a graphic designer and an art director came to a, a halt when I was let go. And, and I tried to figure out what in the world to do next. And to my great surprise, I ended up in the film industry making no money because that's how you get into the film industry. And within about a year of that, I took that short story out of mothballs and I turned it into a short film. And that short film ended up getting to the attention of Angel Studios. And, and they said, hey, we see a feature film here. I said, I do too, and let's do it. And so here we are. Have you worked with Angel Studios at all before that? No, not at all. At the time, they were, well, and as they do now, they take submissions. So you can submit through their website. And if you have a short film or something and you have an idea for turning it into something more, they'll take a look. And at that time, I submitted it. They didn't know me. And they, Brad Reese over at Angel, who's still there now and is now an executive producer on the feature film, he was the first one to see it and he was excited by it. And he ran it up the chain and he said, basically, you guys got to take a look at this. I think it's got some real potential. So it was, yeah, no connections at all, just blind luck, you know, or, or a little bit more than that, if you share my point of view on such things. Right. Divine intervention. I think Absolutely. some people would call that. Right? Yeah. And, and most people would know Angel Studios from The Chosen. I mean, I think that's kind of their lead horse, right? That's, that's yeah, what they're no, what, most well known for. Totally. And at the time that I submitted The Shift, The Chosen was just getting going. Like they hadn't even made an episode yet. They had made a, a pilot and that pilot was out. And I, it was actually watching that pilot that I, I realized, oh, 
this is a this is a faith this is about faith, but tonally it's very dark and it's very different. And what I had created was kind of dark and kind of different. And I thought, right. well, if anybody is right. going to understand what in the world the shift is and what I'm trying to do with it, because a lot of people did, and a lot of people watched it, and they were like, what are, you, what are you doing? You're mixing sci-fi and faith, and this makes no sense. And who in the world is ever going to watch this? Right. But when I saw The Chosen, and I saw tonally it was in the same wheelhouse, I thought, you know what? If anybody's going to get it, Angel Studios is going to get it. And of course, The Chosen took off. And, and now it's, you know, the fourth season is going to be released here soon. But, you know, in the background this whole time, I have been gearing up the shift, and, and now, thankfully, finally, it's it's hitting cinemas. It is somewhat formulated around the story of Job. Is that right. is that fair to say? Do you can, you could probably explain it better than I can. I'd say that it's inspired by the Book of Job. I think that sets the expectation okay. correctly that this is not going to be a one to one telling, but certainly by the time you get to the end of the film, I think it's pretty unmistakable what we're pulling from. I mean, we're we're pretty we're pretty blatant with it. And one of the notes that I made watching the film was throughout the film, there are the black screen with white letters mm-hmm. calling out scripture, right. essentially from Job. A lot of the ahead. audience has no idea that they're scripture as they're, as they're watching it, but I think you do figure it out eventually. Yeah, because it's not even referenced, right? There's not like a no. Job 3.5 or whatever it might be, right? right. It's just a, a black screen with white letters. As we were watching it, my daughter at some point was like, I'm, I'm kind of confused. And so... Actually, why I say that is because my wife and I were able to then kind of pause the film and say, here's what's happening right now. It's very much related to Job and Job lost everything. And, you know, I don't want to give the movie away, so I don't want no spoiler alert. But uh, we were able to tell her, you know, hey, listen, this is kind of based on something that's right from Scripture. And so once we did that, like it was almost like my wife and I knew how the film ends because we've read Job. It, it, right. And again, I want to be fair in uh, in explaining that, but we, as we watched it, we kind of had a sense of what was happening because of Job. And and I, I I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or if that hopefully that honors you in how you made the film because it did make sense to us. No, that's great, and that and that was certainly the intention was to give the audience something to hold on to if if they could if they could grasp it. And you know, in a lot of ways, we're being really upfront with you as far as what the story is. And yet the thing that I have been so tickled by as I have heard people's reactions, and obviously the movie isn't out yet as, as we're doing this, but we have sent out right. uh, preview screeners to a lot of people and, 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 and have done some screenings and things. And the thing I hear the most often is, is that people are very surprised by the ending. And I'm always surprised by that because I'm like, well, we kind of told you what, how the movie was going to end. In the movie itself, we do, but but still, people are are very surprised by it, and I think it's because, yes, if you're familiar with the story of Job, you're probably going to be pretty familiar with kind of some of the beats of this story. But I think that we've tackled it in a way that is different, without giving too much away. Um, there is a multiverse component in this film, and it's not just for nothing. It, it, yeah. it gets us to something that I don't think you could do in a different way. And I won't say more than that. I want people to enjoy the film, but, but the, but certainly within the movie, we are, we are trying to both be obvious, but I think in being obvious, we've ended up surprising people because they, they don't, they really don't see it coming. They don't, they do not see the end of this movie coming. And there was parts where it was stranger things. It was hunger games. It was kind of a, a soup of all these different elements. You mentioned sci-fi. And so that's yeah. mixed in here. And so it's not, you know, people familiar with the chosen. It is, you know, based in that time and it's that kind of thing. So right. for the audience listening, it is, it is a modern day somewhat telling based on somewhat of Job's life with a lot of modern day things that we're used to in film or Netflix series that we watch. I, I want to paint the picture correctly for people listening. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're the struggle you're having right now is a common struggle where this, I think we are so used to getting things regurgitated, you know, whether it be franchise right. films or whatever, we're, we're so used to seeing kind of like, well, this is, I'm going into a mission impossible film. It's the seventh one. I, I know what to expect. Right. Thankfully, this year, audiences are reward, rewarding originality. And I think if whatever else you may think of the shift, I think it's fair to say that it's, it's 
doing something different and it's doing something new. And that can make it difficult to describe the film um, because it is pulling from a lot of different things. It's pulling from the book of Job. It's pulling from, you mentioned Hunger Games. Sure, that's a little bit of that's in there. Um, I, Back to the Future 2 is in there too, uh, in one particular scene. Um, you know, and, and the Matrix a little bit. There's, there's all kinds of different influences. Right. And that probably comes... A lot less from a calculation on my part and a lot more of just I'm a I'm an avid movie buff and I love science fiction and it's my favorite genre. And when I sat sit down to tell a story, I'm gonna use whatever tools are in my kit. And and for me, those are all the great stories that I enjoy. That's that's my faith, that's my life experiences. And so yeah, all of those were put into a soup. They were all mixed together and out came the shift. Now all that said, you know. I'm a storyteller and I worked with a fantastic team and we worked very hard to make it a cohesive whole and not a mishmash. But I mean, you tell me, Aaron, if you, if you felt like it all gelled or, or didn't, you know, we're getting it out in the audience, in front of audiences just now. And so ultimately how this all, you know, how they process it, how you process it says a lot more than whatever we intended. I've not seen all the matrix. I've seen parts of one of them, but I know people are very much into that. And so I think there is that, that for me, that was it took a minute to understand kind of what was happening, the shifting to take from the name, but the shifting that was happening. And once I kind of grasped that and in coupled with Job's story and, and the other things, it did make sense to me. And, you know, my wife just said it the other day, like Hollywood is run out of, in my opinion, Hollywood is run out of new ideas. Like, I feel like we just, to your point, you just said, we're, we're just putting out the same things. And so no disrespect to those films, right. but it's like, let's get something new, something original. Let's get, and I think that's what you've done is created something new and very original. And I really, I enjoyed it. And I have to go to the, you know, I'll say this. I think when I watch a Christian film and I've had the blessing of seeing many of them or, or, you know, watching screeners before they mm -hmm. come out and, you know, sharing them on this platform. I'm going to be honest, man, this might be one of the best ones I've seen from a air quotes, Christian film. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. and, and I think some of them, and no disrespect to those that put those out. I, I know they're on limited budgets, but some of them are just bad. Like the, the cinematography is <laughs> bad. You know, do you know what I'm saying? And I, and again, it's all due respect. I know why they're doing it. I know why the heart they're doing it. I know the budget, they probably have to do it and they're putting it out. And some of them have been very successful. Yeah. This one cinematography the crew the cast everything was very very well done it's on my notes in front of me it was incredibly well done the acting is exceptional you've got a really all-star cast sean asked incredible he did a very good job small not a huge role in the film but a, a big part of the film yeah absolutely i have absolutely. to tell you the actor that played the devil was amazing yeah, yeah. and the neil McDonough. writing yeah. neil mcdonough thank you his dialogue as essentially the devil mm -hmm. and everybody in the room was looking at each other like, yeah, that's, these are the words that the devil uses. These are the phrases that the devil uses to influence us to, to almost like when, when Christ was, you know, that 40 days. Oh yeah. Did he really say, you know, the questioning, right? Uh, man, you guys, you just did a fantastic job. So really want to give you respect and that and neil did an amazing job of delivering that role it was very believable it was it it, it hit like it really hit hard about how i think satan works in our life anyway so much respect to the entire crew no thank you for that i i think that it's neil's i mean look i'm totally biased so take this with a grain of salt but i i've seen neil in a lot of things i i honestly think it's his best performance i love how he played the benefactor and and as you say like yes. every everything he says by design is something that that yeah that you can imagine the devil would say or at least is is the thought mm -hmm. kind of my idea with the benefactor and the way that i wrote him was i wanted to tell the truth with lies so that was kind of my mantra right like he's he's gonna lie and he's going to lie a lot, but he's going to tell the truth. He's, we're going to get to truths through those lies. And that may not make any sense, but I think if you've seen the film, I think when you see the film, I think it will make sense. Right. There's, there, there's a lot of things that he says that are not true, but that we hear. And it's because he's saying them that we know that they're not true. And, and that just gets us, it, it's, it's a different way in. To so what I think are some really eternal principles and truths, and there are things that are, that are worth discussing. 
And for me, that was where my heart was in telling this story. It's like, let's, let's talk about this earthly experience we have. Let's talk about the forces that are combined against us and let's call them out. Let's, let's lay them out. Let's, let's just, let's expose it all and, and talk honestly and openly about it. And the benefactor, the relationship that he has with our main protagonist, Kevin, it's, it's funny because he definitely lies to him. There, there's some lying going on, but the benefactor's relationship with Kevin, and this is what I think is a little bit unique, is that he's, he's not really trying to deceive him. He really believes that Kevin is going to go along with him. And so he doesn't feel the need to put up a whole lot of pretense. He doesn't feel the need to not be confident that, you know, everything's going to go his way. And, and I think that allows them to have conversations maybe that we're not used to, to hear. When, you know, because a man versus devil, it's, it's a very common classic, you know, story and trope. Right. But, but with the shift, I do think that we found a new way in and, and we found a way that we can talk about these things and, and hear about these things in a completely different way. At least that's certainly my hope. And it seemed like he made offers. Like, if you do this, you know, you know, it could produce this. And as you said, it's a lie. It's a lie. And that's, right. that was powerful for me. As I listen to that, it's like, boy, in our own lives, don't we deal with that where Satan will tempt us with certain things. And, and to Job's story, that was allowed, you know, God allowed that right. in his life because, you know, and, and that's, man, it was just powerful. It was very, very powerful. So I thought his, his role in the film was amazing and how he, as you said, I, I, his, his anger, we, I can't give away the film. So, you know, I don't want to do that. I don't want to spoil the film. But yeah. his, his anger at times, his reaction to certain moments at times, he was fantastic. The entire crew was fantastic. There was nobody that was, I, I, I can't say it enough. It's not one of those bad Christian films. And so anyone listening to the podcast, please understand, this isn't one, and I, again, all respect to those films, but you know the films I'm talking about. You've been to one where it was like, well, great story. You know, acting was bad. Cinematography was bad. This is not that film. It's amazing. Yeah, no, I, and across the board, I'm really glad to hear you say that because I'm so proud of all of our actors and the work that they did. They really gave their all to this. I mean, Chris Palaha, who plays our lead, I don't think there's an emotion that he doesn't cover in this, in his performance right. of this film. And he's in every single scene, you know, it's a very demanding role for a lead actor. And Chris actually shot this film about three days after he wrapped up his previous film. And, and he, he went from one to the other just very, very quickly. So he came into this exhausted. And then we spent the next five weeks running that guy down to the ground. And he gave it 100% <laughs> every single day. And I'm really, really excited for people to see this because Chris had really made his name in the Hallmark universe. And, and he's known as one of the best, if not the best actor within that universe. So I'm really excited for people to see this film because this is not a Hallmark film, but it calls upon right. all the skills that, that Chris had that he deploys for the Hallmark because there is a strong romance component to, to the shift, but it's, there's so much more going on than that. And Chris really gets to show off everything he's done. And I'm not talking out of school here because Chris has said it many times. This is his favorite role that he's ever done. This is his favorite job that he's ever had. Wow. And, and he really gave it everything. And I'm, I think a lot of people are going to be paying a lot more attention to him after they see this. And we have Elizabeth Tavish as well, who plays Mary Magdalene on The Chosen. And if you only know her from The Chosen, and most people do, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised by this film because she's playing a completely different role. She gets to use her own accent, first of all, which is really cool. But, but Liz is a tremendous actress and somebody who just is... Again, like I, I think every time she registers an emotion, there's about five emotions, emotions behind it. She's just a very nuanced, nuanced actor. And I, I don't know, I, I could go on all day about our cast, but uh, those three, Chris, Neil, and, and Liz, they do a lot in this film. And I think people are going to be really, really happy with each of them. That's why I said at the beginning, I, I do believe the cast was amazing. Cinematography was amazing. Where did you film it? Because, it, you know, at times it's dark, kind of that Hunger Games kind of, urban empty streets kind of feel to it where did you film it so we shot it in birmingham alabama and uh, which originally we were going to shoot it in atlanta georgia because that's kind of a hub it's kind of a second hollywood out there and but that also means there's a lot of competition for crew and for actors and things like that and so 
we went over to Alabama. I'd never been to Alabama before, but my producer, Ken Carpenter, he had shot a movie actually with Chris Palaha in Alabama called Run the Race a number of years ago. And he just had a feeling. And uh, so we drove over there and, and I entered Birmingham, Alabama the first time. And I'll tell you, within just a few minutes, I was like, oh my gosh, this is this, like, this is, this looks like what I wrote. And so Birmingham has just got so much character and the people there are just incredibly, incredibly kind. And, and it's not a place that's been shot a whole lot, like not a ton of movies have been made there. So you don't, you're not going to enter this and, and think, you know, I've seen that before. Like it's the, the locations all there in Birmingham are, are pretty much brand new for most people for this film. There's a few quotes that they said, we are more than the worst things we've ever done. Yeah. Again, not to give away teasers in the film, but I wrote that down because I thought that was powerful. We're more than the worst things we've ever done. I just thought that was a great line. Did you come uh, up with that? Yeah, that was that was that was my line. That's something that that's something that Chris. So Chris Palaha, his character Kevin, delivers that line. And the line is, "I'm more than the worst things I've ever done," which which I love that you rephrased it as "we're more than the the worst things we've ever done," because that's really the, the point of him saying it, is to say it to all of us, you know, that whatever we've done that that doesn't define us. Whatever the horrible thing we've all done, horrible things, but those don't define us. Right. And that was a line that Chris also, he really grabbed onto that really, I think, I think that's even the line that he cites the most often is the most meaningful to him personally. It was fantastic. It was, I mean, especially the timing of it, everything like, I can't say enough. I really want to praise you and now you've put this film together because I, that was just an incredible line. And, and I was curious too, about how you would weave in, in Job's story, you know, his friend's question. Mm -hmm. Hey man, all this stuff's happening to you. Why is this happening to you? I thought you did an exception. And that's, I think Sean's character a little bit is questioning it. And again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to walk around it. Cause I don't want, I don't want to give away the film, but I thought <laughs> Sean's right. character was kind of one of those guys. Is that how you set that up as well? Yeah, totally. No, I mean, in, in Job's story, he has three friends that are kind of giving him a hard time. And, you know, I didn't want to go through all that. So we kind of boiled it down to, to Sean's character. His name is Gabriel. And yeah, and, and he's the one who kind of, raises the obvious questions, which is, hey, man, you're going through a lot. Like, are you really sure that, that you should be, you know, following this, this God that, that you believe in? And, and are you sure you, you, you know, like, you ever wonder maybe what you're doing wrong, you know, and, you know, which is, a, which is a, a massive distillation of kind of the opposition that, that Job encountered from his friends. But it's, it's worth exploring. And, and look, I mean, he's asking and Job's friends, they, you know, they, we sometimes are very hard in our assessment of Job's friends, but they were asking the really obvious questions, you know, the questions that right. quite frankly, all of us ask when we're going through a hard time, which is basically boils down to, do I deserve this? Is this something that I did that I brought upon myself because of, you know, the sins that I've committed and the things that I've done wrong? It's a, it's a worthy question to ask. And the, and the film has something to say about it, but I won't give it away because it's, you know. That's right. I won't either. I'm, I'm doing my best not to. One of my favorite films is a Nicolas Cage film. I can't remember. I think it's called The Family Man or The Family I love God the or family something man. like that, where it's a family man, where he makes the a different man, decision yeah. and then he gets a glimpse. He gets a glimpse of what life would have been if he would have made other decisions. And I yeah. think that's kind of woven in here too, isn't it? Where that's the shifting aspect of it is. If we shift and make a different decision in our life, it changes things. Is that, did you pull from that as well? Yeah, no, I, you're the first person to ever figure that out. Uh, the family man was very much on my mind as I was writing the, the, the show. And also there's a scene in particular from the climax of the film that pulls from the climax of the family man. Nobody's ever figured it out, but it definitely was on my mind as I was writing. And that's one of my favorite movies. So I love that. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's such a good film. It's one of my favorites because, you know, we, we all, that's life, right? We, we mm -hmm. can shift. We can make a different decision and who we become based on a decision that we make in that moment determines the future. Right. You know, especially as a dad of daughters, you understand that, right? It, oh, as yeah. a dad of kids myself, it, it's, you know, we understand and now we have that glimpse into their lives and the decisions that they make. So I love that you pulled all this stuff together. So I'm really honored to be with you today and I'm very thankful. Uh, one of the last things that I saw at the end was about paying it forward, buying a ticket. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a cool concept. Can you talk about that, about how people could pay it forward to maybe someone else? Yeah. So the movie's worth sticking around for in, into the credits because Chris Balaha, our lead actor, does come on and, 
and talk a little bit about this concept of paying it forward. And it's something that Angel Studios actually invented, which is just this idea that not everybody can afford to go into the movie theater and, and, and see a movie. And so if people are touched by what they've seen and they feel like it's, it's something that could be helpful to others, they have the opportunity to pay it forward, which essentially means prepaying for tickets so that people can then go and claim. And, and so if that's something that you want to do now, or if you want to claim your free tickets, uh, you can go to angel.com slash share the shift and you can see how all this works and you can either claim tickets or, or pay it forward. Um, but it's a really great way, um, especially with movies like this, where, you know, obviously our primary goal um, is to entertain. And, and because if you're not entertaining, then none of the rest, nothing else you do matters. And when you talk about the quality of the film, I really think that's, if it has a quality to it, I think it's because that was our approach was let's entertain first. But the second part of that is, is that, you know, every film carries a message, even films that you know, the filmmaker says, no, there's no message. No, every film has a message. Something is carried across the audience every single time. My goal as a storyteller, my goal as a filmmaker is to make films that, the, that are enriching to people. That ultimately, whatever darkness we have to pass through, and certainly there's dark moments in this film. And there's a point to that because we pass through darkness to get to light. Mm-hmm. That, that ultimately, at the end of the film, you're left enriched and, and you're left with something to think about. And you're left with something positive and that and that it can be encouraging to you. That's, that's what interests me as a storyteller. And so this paid forward idea is fantastic because if you feel like we've accomplished that goal and you feel like, hey, you know what? People ought to see this film. This could be really helpful to them. Not only is it a good time, but and we all deserve to have a good time now. And again, certainly life is stressful enough that, that we deserve that. But more than that, here, here's something worthy and, and that could be helpful to people. And if you feel like that we've hit that mark, then yeah, we provided a, a very easy way for you to, to contribute to somebody else's experience who may not otherwise be able to experience this film and have, have that benefit to their own life. What are all the links? Just you mentioned one. What are, what are the links where people can find the film? It's coming out really soon. If you want to get tickets, the easiest place to go is angel.com slash the shift. Angel.com slash the shift. And right there, you'll see immediately where it's playing in your area. And there's a link there to go to the theater and go ahead and purchase your tickets. If it's not showing at your preferred theater, there's also a link there to call your theater and let them know, hey, we want to see this film. That's really the best way to get it to show near you if it's not. This is a wide release movie, and so we're getting it out as far and wide as we can, and new theaters are being added every day. And certainly if the movie has a successful first weekend, then theaters get added. We saw that happen with Sound of Freedom, where the second weekend was actually better than the first because people really came out for it. But uh, so that's, that's, that's one place. And then the other place that I just mentioned was angel.com slash share the shift. And that's where you can pay it forward or claim your free tickets. And then of course we're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all those places. Where can they find you on those on Facebook? Uh, is, is there see, a handle? On, yeah, there's a handle on Facebook. It's at shifty film. Um, and on Twitter, it's at the shift film. And I, or at the shift underscore film, something like that. And then on Instagram, it's at the shift film. I don't know. If you look up the shift on any one of those platforms, you should see it pretty quick. We're, we're pretty active right now. And so it's usually the first thing that pops up. Well, man, I wish you success. I hope people get out this week. I mean, it's a holiday season now. People are looking for movies. They're looking for things to do. They're out shopping, yeah. you know, those kind of things. I really do hope that they will take time to visit this film because it was powerful. It was powerful in the aspect that we all make decisions in our life and those decisions determine in many ways our, our future. And, and I love that about how you've woven a lot of things into this film. Um, your writing is exceptional. I really mean that it, it is oh, really you. creative. It's new. It's different. I love that you pulled from the family. <laughs> The family the story. <laughs> it's one of my favorite films as well. I love that glimpse into what could have been, what might have been, and thank God that some things aren't what they they could have been because of decisions I made or or didn't make. So I I really it's really really good. Your cast is exceptional. The writing is exceptional. I can't say enough good things. It was very very entertaining. I really enjoyed it. I do have to tell you, my favorite part is the street the um, screening that they gave us. We were able to watch it home yeah. and it had our company's name on it. And it just popped up like every, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. It would just show our company's name across the screen, whatever. And it seemed like every time that happened, it was a very dark moment in the film. <laughs> so, 
And so my daughter would say, you know, hey, this scene is brought to you by the Unscripted Collective. And it was like, it was a very dark <laughs> moment in the film. So That's hilarious. So anyway, inside story, but very funny. We we enjoyed that. So throughout the film, we started laughing. Every time our, our logo would pop up, we, we kind of laughed because it was yeah. like, well, it's not the best timing, but... <laughs> Anyway, thank you for allowing us to screen it. We really enjoyed it. And I wish you, no, thank uh, you for checking it out. just great success. I really do because you worked very hard on this. Uh, how long is this? How long? Well, you said back. So you started this in the MySpace era, which is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2006. And, and here we are. How many years is that? That's 17 years. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll caveat wow. that by saying that I did the short film eight years ago. So I usually just say this has been an eight okay. year journey because certainly that short story i never thought would turn into this but uh, yeah it's been an eight-year journey to get well, to. thank you so much well happy holidays to you good luck this weekend great film great crew just again i'm i'm very very honored to have had the opportunity to see it so i hope you have great success this weekend and really all throughout the holiday season and hope you come up with more i look forward to future you know things from you uh, i appreciate that i look forward to making more i'm ready to go well, if you ever do, you got a place to come back and tell the story. So thank you so much. And I do want to see that PowerPoint. So you're going to have to send me the PowerPoint offline. <laughs> I'll about see if dog. I can dig it I up. I don't want you. another dog. I don't want another dog, but you might have to make a movie about that, man. That that would probably be rather entertaining, a family film. <laughs> about daughters. So there you go. There's your next film. <laughs> Best of luck to you, man. Happy holidays. Thanks so right. much for joining us, Brian. Thanks to you as well. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Unscripted Podcast with your host, Aaron Conrad, from his studio in Old Hilliard. Make sure to like, share, follow, and review on your favorite podcast platforms. Also, make sure to check out my song, Great and Mighty One, on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you find your music. We'll see you next time on Unscripted with Aaron Conrad.